The bizarre events preceding this president's entry into national politics may have scarred his memory of Ohio. Benjamin Harrison wasn't much like his gregarious grandfather, President William Henry Harrison. In fact, it was said of President Benjamin Harrison that he was curt to the point of incivility. But perhaps part of that could be attributed to a tragic incident in the wake of the death of a loved one. In 1878, Benjamin Harrison's father, John Scott Harrison, died. He was buried at Congress Green Cemetery just across the street from William Henry Harrison, his father's grave. That evening, Benjamin Harrison and his brother went to Congress Green to play their last respects to their father. Nearby, they found an open grave, that of a friend of the family. This was the era of grave robbers, medical students who would steal cadavers out of fresh graves. Benjamin Harrison and his brother went into Cincinnati to the medical schools to see if they could find the body of the person that had been desecrated. And lo and behold, instead of finding the body of the person that they expected. They found the body of John Scott Harrison. It turned out that their father's body had also been stolen, but the thieves had put the dirt back into the grave so carefully they did not suspect it had been opened. What effect all this had on Benjamin Harrison is not known, but he rarely returned to Ohio during the remainder of his life. In fact, Ohio doesn't seem to remember him very well either. Only this small sign points to where he was born in North Bend, Ohio, and his boyhood home down the road has been replaced by an electric plant. A plaque at the front gate, the only memorial that recalls a president of the United States once lived here. Even in death, Benjamin Harrison did not return to Ohio, even though most of his relatives were buried in his grandfather's tomb. When he died in 1893, it was his wish that he be buried in Indiana, a place that apparently held happier memories for him. In our next report, we'll meet the president from Ohio who first urged Americans to see what they could do for the government and not what the government could do for them. His name may surprise you. I'm Neil Zerker, News Center 8. Eleven days before the election and the presidential candidates are hitting the campaign road hard. Tonight, Neil recalls the last Ohioan to win the White House. It was often said that Warren G. Harding looked like a president of the United States should look. It was 1920 when Harding and his wife Florence left their home here in Marion, Ohio to move to the White House. They were never to return to the house. It sits today like a time capsule of the 1920s. The Harding furniture where it was the last time the Hardings saw it 68 years ago. Here you will find pictures of Warren G. Harding as a youth in Blooming Grove, Ohio as the young publisher and editor of the newspaper, The Marion Star, as Lieutenant Governor of Ohio, and as United States Senator from Ohio, and finally as President of the United States, where he was the last president to conduct a front porch campaign, inviting the voters to come to him to hear his views. He stood at the top of the steps, or in a curved section of the porch, he gave 40 formal talks. He would talk to anywhere between 2,000, over 25,000 people. Gary also takes issue with those who say Harding was an ineffectual president. He was only in office two and a half years. He probably accomplished more in two and a half years than most presidents have in four years. And with Andrew Vaughn as Secretary of the Treasury, why they had the most drastic decrease of income taxes in the history of the United States. Harding never lived to complete his first term. He died in San Francisco while returning from a trip to Alaska. Even as he was brought back to Marion in death, scandals involving his administration started to surface. But no one ever proved Harding was guilty of any wrongdoing. In fact, he was held in such affection that people across the nation donated money to build this memorial to his memory. And it is here that rest the bodies of Warren and Florence Harding. He was a man of certain eloquence. In a small garden at the rear of his home is a stone engraved with a quote from one of his speeches words seem hauntingly familiar. He said, we must have a citizenship less concerned about what the government can do for it and more anxious about what it can do for the nation. Those words, the words of Warren Harding in 1918. In our next report, we remember two vice presidents from Ohio, one forgotten, the other barely remembered. Neil Zerker, News Center 8. 
John O'Day says more people are making bread to bring home the bacon. Money matters. Neil Zerker remembers of Buckeye natives who became vice president. We have a way of quickly forgetting the men who have served as vice president of the United States. But perhaps no man has been more forgotten than this one. His name was Thomas Hendricks. Even in Zanesville, Ohio, his birthplace, no one recognizes his name today. Never heard of him. What do you know about the man Thomas Hendricks? I don't know him. Never heard of him. He was vice president of the United States. Really? Even members of the local historical society weren't sure just who he was when I first contacted them. If you'd have asked about John Glenn or Zane Gray or some of those, uh, we could have given you uh, much more information. This fellow's a total stranger. For the record, Thomas Hendricks was vice president under Grover Cleveland. Hendricks was born in a log cabin right here alongside the Jonathan Creek outside of Zanesville. As a boy, he moved to Indiana, grew up there, became governor of Indiana, U.S. senator, and vice president of the United States. He died nine months after being elected vice president. Charles Fairbanks, on the other hand, may not be a household word that he once was when he was vice president of the U.S., but he is at least remembered here in Union County, where he was born and raised. The Union County Historical Society especially remembers him. Welcome to the Charles Fairbanks room. Thank you. The door to the building is from Fairbanks' birthplace. The furniture from his Indiana home fills the parlor, and pictures of Fairbanks on visits back to Ohio cover the walls. He, too, moved to Indiana and rose to U.S. Senator, and twice nominated and once elected vice president, serving as number two man with Theodore Roosevelt. Why is Fairbanks remembered? Well, I think that we can learn from the past. The past is our heritage, and we can pass that along to our school children today. Almost once a month, this museum plays host to a group of school children from around the county, trying to uh, help them learn about their heritage in Union County. In our next report, we'll remember the very first Ohioan to be elected president of the United States. I'm Neil Zerker, News Center 8. And now for a weather forecast that you're really going to like, at least for the next 20 elected to the nation's highest office, holds a unique position in history. In his special report, Ohio Memories of the White House, New Center Rights Neil Zerker tells us about the man whose presidency was the shortest on record. William Henry Harrison is claimed by Ohio as one of our presidents, even though he was born in Virginia, which also claims him. And while he spent much of his life outside the Buckeye State, our ninth president loved this state and considered it his home. It was his wish that he be buried on this hill in North Bend, Ohio, overlooking the Ohio River. The towering tomb spells out the highlights of Harrison's life. Soldier, governor of Indiana Territory, U.S. Senator from Ohio, ambassador, and finally president of the United States. The memorial was built in the 1920s on top of the original Harrison tomb. The tomb, according to local historians, contains a few mysteries. Who all is buried in the tomb? Uh, there's some question about that. I know William Henry and, uh, and his uh, wife and John Scott and, uh, and some of um, Harrison's other children and grandchildren. All right, and some of the graves not marked in the tomb, or is that? That's it? right, some of them aren't. And uh, there's even some question about whether they're empty or not. Vandalism in recent times has forced the tomb, once open to the public, to be locked at all times. A plastic bag covers a broken floodlight. Evidence of graffiti can be found inside and outside the tomb. William Henry Harrison became part of the American story when he ran for president in 1841 as the log cabin candidate, even though his cabin in North Bend had grown to a 22-room house. Harrison won the election, but 30 days after his inauguration as president, he died, probably from pneumonia he caught while delivering his inaugural address. He became the first president to die while in office and holds the record for the shortest term a president has ever served, just one month. In our next report, we'll recall the Ohioan who as president was much beloved and led America into the 20th century as a world power. I'm Neil Zerker, News Center 8. 
And that's our news at 6. The CBS Evening News with Dan Rather is next. Thank you. American history occurred here in northern Ohio. New Center Rights Neil Zerker says the tragedy was virtually ignored. Only a cement floor remains on this chill November day, 25 years after 63 persons died on this spot. On the morning of November 23, 1963, this was all that was left of the Golden Age nursing home on U.S. Route 250 in Huron County. Of the 84 residents who lived here, 63 were dead. Douglas Lash was a lieutenant on the New London Fire Department and remembers searching through these ruins on that long ago morning of death. They got out of bed and they dropped as they came along. So you found the bodies in the hallway then? Oh yes. An electrical short circuit in a food heating unit touched off the fire, which quickly spread to the wood and tar paper roof of the home. The terrible search for the charred bodies went on for two days. You couldn't eat, you couldn't smoke cigarettes, you'd throw food and you'd smoke and throw set packs of cigarettes because you had that taste in your mouth. The rescue effort was doubly hard for the firefighters since most of the dead had been local residents, neighbors, well known to the firemen. Twelve hours earlier in Dallas, President Kennedy had been assassinated, and reporters covering the fire in Fitchville were finding that outside the local area, few people were interested in the tragic happenings in northern Ohio. Nobody cared. Nobody really. Everybody was so consumed with the, with the Kennedy assassination that a mere 65 deaths didn't, didn't cause even a dent in their news day. When it was over of the 63 dead in Fitchville, 21 bodies were still unclaimed. They were buried in a mass grave at Woodlawn Cemetery in Norwalk. 25 years ago, as a young reporter, I covered this story. One memory I still have of that day is hearse after hearse after hearse pulling into the cemetery. And there were the caskets, lined up in ranks, a silent reminder of the terrible things that sometimes must happen before rules and laws are changed. Today, nursing homes have automatic sprinkler systems. Today, they must comply with state electrical codes. Today, they must meet safety and health standards. All of these rules came too late for the residents of the Golden Age Nursing Home. Neil Zerker, New Center 8, Huron County. Well, the law is catching up with a Lyndhurst businessman described by... In these cool shadows guarded by heroic columns stands the memory of William McKinley. Born on this spot in Niles, Ohio, he was our 25th president and destined to be the third of our leaders to die by an assassin's bullet. He left his birthplace to fight in the Civil War. When it was over, his bravery had earned him the rank of brevet major. He became a lawyer and moved to Canton. It was here he met the lovely Ida Saxton who was destined to become his wife. Her father's home, where they lived for some time, still stands, a memorial to the happier days of William and Ida McKinley. They had two daughters, both died in infancy. Ida developed epilepsy and was an invalid the rest of her days. But despite the tragic turn their lives had taken, McKinley's love and concern for his wife deepened, despite his skyrocketing career, prosecutor, governor, congressman, and finally candidate for president of the United States, he refused to leave her side, even to campaign. Well, the front porch of uh, the McKinley home was the place where McKinley carried out all of his campaign, or nearly all of his campaign. Uh, William McKinley and his wife were, were very close. Mrs. McKinley was ill, and I think they, they planned to stay together. And the people came, thousands of them, and McKinley was elected. As president, he led us through the Spanish-American War and into the 20th century, establishing America for the first time as a world power. In September of 1901, McKinley was in Buffalo, New York. As he shook hands with a crowd, he was shot. He died three weeks later. They brought William McKinley here to this quiet spot, this quiet spot on a hill overlooking Canton, the city he loved. They put William McKinley in a tomb of cool marble. A proverb says, good men must die, but death cannot kill their names. A poet wrote, the sun sets in a cloud and is not seen. Beauty that spoke aloud addresses now only the remembering ear. The heart begins here to feed on what has been. Night falls fast today, already as in the past. William and Ida McKinley and their love are 
are now part of that night. I'm Neil Zerker, New Center 8 with Ohio Memories, The White House. swimming, you might want to consider one of the many hotels and motels here that offer indoor pools, along with a lot of other amenities, and a bid to fill empty rooms in the wintertime. We stayed at the Cairn Croft Hotel, where package weekends for two can run as low as $59 American, and they say that price can even be lower. Sunday through Thursday would, of course, be the, the nights that, that you could negotiate even more and find the better deals. For bargain basement prices and world-class attractions, try Niagara Falls for a winter one-tank trip. I'm Neil Zerker, News Center 8. There's a place in the state that can be called the bed and breakfast capital. It's here, the small historic community of Zor in Tuscarawas County. There are at least six houses in this town of 200 that open their homes to tourists, and by far the most unusual is Cowger No. 9. A log cabin built way back in 1817. Walk up the stairs and you'll find quaint rooms with antique beds and furnishings. But each room also has modern conveniences, sometimes tucked into odd corners and even stairways of this old home. And in another building, they've found some other uses for the residue of the town's rustic past, like this hidden bathtub. They even offer a honeymoon suite complete with fireplace, king-size bed, and private bath with a hot tub. And you not only get the bed, you also get breakfast. And what a breakfast, all made from scratch by Mary Cowger, who adds to the enjoyment by taking on the role of a stern 19th century German widow who runs this inn and who brooks no nonsense when it comes to cleaning the plate. You better eat everything you take, or I'm going to get out this whipping stick and I'm going to use it. In the evenings, Mary and her husband Edward, who portrays a wounded Civil War soldier home on leave, put on dinners for the public in their dining room, mixing good food with some historic entertainment. The dinners are by reservation only. Walk around Zor and you'll discover many hidden treasures from a shop that makes teddy bears. This is a bear that's not stuffed yet. To a European cafe tucked away in a subterranean basement where you can find authentic torts and cakes. You can have one piece or the whole thing. And for entertainment for the kids, you're only minutes away from the Canton Akron area where you can find things to do like indoor miniature golf. It's an 18-hole course that's all inside and open year-round. So for a romantic weekend just for the two of you, try the Zor area for a winter one-tank getaway. I'm Neil Zerker, News Center 8.
If you have always wanted to try riding a snowmobile but don't want to go to the expense of buying one or looking for a place to ride it, then head for Pima Tuning Lake in Jamestown, Pennsylvania. The winter cold only seems to intensify the stark beauty of this 25,000 acre park that straddles the Pennsylvania-Ohio border. At the Jamestown Livery, you'll find what's believed to be the only place in three states that you can rent a snowmobile. You have to be over 21, wear a helmet, and have a driver's license. It'll cost about $50 for four hours. They also require a deposit. The best part is that the state park here offers over 350 miles of wooded and lakeside trails where you can ride in safety. This is also bargain time at the state park. These newly built cedar cabins are available by the week or the weekend at rock bottom prices. They all have modern conveniences, including electric heat. You can rent a cabin for a long weekend, which would be Friday through Monday for $75. These rates, by the way, are good until the end of March. If you're spending the weekend and looking for someplace special to eat, you might consider the Gibson House Restaurant. This was once the home of a friend of Mark Twain, and the menu reflects Twain's southern heritage with Cajun dishes as well as other American dishes. The portions are large, the prices are moderate, a more formal dining room is available on weekends. The house, which is on the National Register of Historic Places, is also open for tours. Jamestown, Pennsylvania, a great one-tank getaway, and just across the Ohio-Pennsylvania border. I'm Neil Zerker, News Center 8. because our life planning series continues. This week, New Center 8's Neil Zerker will be looking at the game plan and how it affects our lives. When most of us hear the term recreation, we usually get a mental picture of an individual, hobby, sport, or cultural activity that we personally enjoy and take part in. But it is important that we broaden our thinking of the term recreation. Webster's definition of recreation is to create a new, restore, a means of refreshment or diversion. A great deal of evidence exists that Americans are not getting enough recreational diversity. According to the Television Bureau of Advertising, TV sets are on over seven hours every day in the average American household. Less than half of our population has read a non-work-related book in the last month. And symphonies and community theater continue to fight for audiences. To see if you are culturally active, answer yes or no to the following life planning questions. Have you attended a concert or play in the past three months? Have you visited an art gallery or library in the past three months? Have you seen a movie in the past two months? <laughs> Have you watched less than two hours of entertainment TV per night during the past month? Have you read a non-work related book in the past month? If you did not answer yes to all five questions, you are ignoring and depriving yourself of a cultural aspect of life. And New Center It's Neil Zerker says culture can be found right in our own backyard. The Cleveland Orchestra, one of our proudest cultural symbols here in Northern Ohio, or our world famous Cleveland Art Museum, we are indeed lucky to live in such a culturally rich area of our country. Museums abound, some even inside public libraries, like the Cowan Pottery Museum here in Rocky River, a unique blend of displays of art with great books. When it comes to culture and libraries, you're going to find that a good library is a lot more than just a good book. There are many things today you can borrow, the latest compact discs and even the machine to play them on. You can check out video movies, talking books, phonograph records. There are even computers available for public use. Culturally, we are the continuing education uh, in, uh, agency beyond all schooling. It's, it's an opportunity for people to enjoy the best, the finest, perhaps the, the most unusual information because we collect all types of information. It allows them to expose themselves to all types of information for the rest of their life. And there is more. How about borrowing copies of famous paintings to hang in your home? We have a great number of, of framed, uh, pieces of framed art, 350, and there's no charge to take them out. And libraries are even starting to come into our home with their services. If 
you have a home computer and modem, both the Cleveland and County Public Libraries now have their book catalogs online. And you can search the catalog 24 hours a day from your home and even order books and videos via your home computer. We've only scratched the surface of all the free services available at our public libraries, but perhaps the most unique is at the county system, where professional job counselors are available every day to help us in career planning, job changes, and even writing our resume and looking for a new job. I, I don't know if you've ever thought about training, There's, uh, which is another form of teaching. It's called InfoPlace and was one of the first such free services in the country. Many of us deprive ourselves of the cultural aspects of life, but we can start correcting that by getting reacquainted with our local library. And best of all, it's free. Neil Zerker, News Center 8. And remember, if you would like to follow along with the life planning quiz, you can pick up a copy of where you can watch a glass artist at work, eat in an old grist mill, and spend a night in a mansion. Here's Neil and a one-tank trip. The waters in the Sandusky River flow swift this time of year. In downtown Tiffin, they rush by the old Pioneer Mill restaurant, much as they have for nearly 175 years. It's a pleasant place to spend a winter weekend good food and antique surroundings. You can find everything from frog legs to roast duckling almondine on the menu. For weekend evenings, be sure to make reservations. Tiffin was once a name synonymous with fine crystal. And while the Tiffin glass works is gone, one of its glass cutters continues the art of freehand etching here at his shop. Learn the patterns, um, storm in your head, and uh, it's, uh, something that you learn over your apprenticeship to, 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 uh, to cut those patterns without having to draw on the glass. Custom-made glassware is for sale in a room in the front of the shop. Tours of the studio are available. But this is the best reason for coming to Tiffin. A luxurious place to spend a weekend. This is the new Zelkova Inn, a mansion nestled in the midst of a 30-acre estate. Welcome to the Zelkova Inn. Thank you. Inside, this is what you'll find. The living room with its grand piano. A glass wall that overlooks the Honey Creek running through the valley below the home. There is a formal library also available to guests. And a chandelier dining room where you'll have tea upon your arrival and breakfast before you leave. Up the curving stairway are the bedrooms. Many, like the master bedroom, have their own bathrooms. The prices range from about $75 to $110 a night for this bed and breakfast, but it's a romantic destination for a winter one-tank getaway. I'm Neil Zerker, News Center 8. And that's our News at 6, the CBS Evening News with Dan Rather is next. Thank you for sharing your time with us, and we hope to see you back here week for another one-tank trip. Even though the fields are asleep and colors of brown and gray streak the landscape in this wintertime, there is a special beauty in this countryside where Ohio's Amish live. The tourists are gone now. There are a few tour buses to view these simple sights that easily awaken memories of other times either lived or only read about. For those of us who seek the peace and quiet of an Ohio winter, this is the place to go. Early in the morning, you can stop in at the Sharp Run Cheese Factory and watch Swiss cheese being made in huge copper kettles, much as it was a century ago. Or for a quiet place to stay, this is the newest inn, just opened this past autumn. The Berlin Junction Complex offers a simple elegance in neat country furnished rooms, each room with a balcony that overlooks nearby farms. Next door is the Dutch Harvest Restaurant, where meals are prepared the Amish way. But there are also offerings that are lighter, in keeping with today's taste. Something for everyone. Just across the parking lot is the new exercise center, where you can work out in the most modern equipment. Or just enjoy a leisurely swim in the indoor heated pool. For those that want to just relax, there's both a sauna and a hot tub. 
Best of all, there are bargain prices here that include all of this. The two night package is one hundred nine fifty. That's for one person. Two people. For everything. For everything. So if it's peace and quiet you seek, try the Amish country for a winter getaway. It's only a one tank trip. I'm Neil Zerker, News Center Eight. That's our news at six. The CBS Evening News with Dan Rather is. This is Terra, a country inn, not in Georgia, but just across the Ohio line in Sharon, Pennsylvania. Much like its movie namesake, this Terra has the rich decorations of its 19th century past. In fact, as you walk through the halls and peek into the rooms, you almost expect a surprise scarlet and red. Ah. Has the war started? For $150 a night, you can stay here in one of the several luxuriously equipped rooms, rooms that come with a fireplace and bathtubs big enough for two people and an inner tube. And if you don't like bathtubs for two, they have other choices. We can ask you like your favorite color, what kind of tub you'd like, whether it be sunken, a regular galvanized tub. Uh, we do offer one jacuzzi, a step up into tub and shower unit. The dining room also open to the public reflects the gone with the wind theme of the inn. Just down the road is Daffin's Candies and believe it or not, this is said to be the largest candy store in the world under one roof. In addition, they offer a chocoholic dream of a display of life-size animals made entirely of chocolate. That turtle alone weighs over 400 pounds. And if you enjoy saying you visited the biggest candy store, you'll also want to stop at nearby Ryer Shoe Store, also claimed to be the largest shoe store under one roof in the world. Their inventory contains over 170,000 pairs of shoes. And the prices and choice are so good that they've become a tourist attraction. We have uh, bus loads literally come through to see the main store and also our outlet store. And uh, on a given day, you can have eight to 10 buses come through. And there's more, a neat eatery here called the Quaker Steak and Lube Company holds the title for the best chicken wings in the USA. They go through literally tons of chicken wings each week here in this unique restaurant. And with Easter coming up, you might want to bring the kids to Cronyok's Garden Center for their animated Easter Bunny walk. It's open until mid-April, and it's free. Sharon, Pennsylvania, a lot to see and do, and it's only a one-tank trip. I'm Neil Zerker, News Center 8. And that's our news at 6. The CBS Evening News with Dan Rather is next. Thank you. for. We're headed south of Columbus for more bridges, more bargains, and, of course, more good food. It's one-tank trip that had even Neil asking for a little shut-eye by day's end. If you enjoy the charm of discovering Ohio's covered bridges, you'll love Lancaster and Fairfield County south of Columbus. Here, eight such bridges dot the county. This is the second largest collection of these so-called kissing bridges in the state. The local Chamber of Commerce will be glad to give you a map showing how to find them. If you're spending your weekend bargain hunting, you'll do well to stop at the Kitchen Collections, an outlet store for the Anchor Hawking Glass Factory in town, as well as Wherever Aluminum and other products. They claim that you can save up to 70% on some items. Downtown in historic Lancaster, several craft shops dot the neighborhood, where you can even have a custom Amish quilt made. We could have them made for you. We take special orders. We also sell fabric in the back, so you can choose your fabric. And when it comes time to eat, residents here that know good hamburgers head for the White Cottage Restaurant. It's been here for 50 years. The menu's written on the wall. It hasn't changed much in half a century. The main seller is the custom ground hamburger with a dab of secret recipe mustard relish. But their Katie's recipe potato salad is also a big favorite. And the homemade pies, so fresh they steam up the glass display case. If only every town had a white cottage restaurant. For a different place to spend the night, visit the Double D Ranch, the newest bed and breakfast in town. Located on a farm, there are pleasant rooms for $35 a night that include a piece of fresh pie when you arrive and breakfast. Or for $10 a night, you can sleep in the haymow of their barn. We've had people that uh, really enjoy it, and uh, they have a lot of fun. You know, Lancaster, Ohio can be a fun place. 
Oh, someone turn off the lights. Neil Zerker, New Center 8, on a one tank trip. <laughs> Going for a roll in the hay. Well, coming up next. Ten years ago, when gasoline prices were spiraling upwards, we challenged New Center 8's Neil Zerker to fill his car with gasoline and go in search of interesting vacation spots that could be easily reached on just one tank of gas. Just how well he succeeded is proven by the fact that a decade later that he's still traveling, and with gasoline prices going up again, it looks like we all can use some more one-tank trips. Each night this coming week, as Neil starts his 1989 summer tour, he'll take us to a unique bed and breakfast on board an old Sternweeder riverboat. We'll go prospecting for gems right here in Ohio. We'll visit the largest buffalo ranch in the eastern United States. And we'll go along on a dinner train that serves gourmet food and offers a tour of an Indian reservation. From a teepee to a magnificent mansion, he'll show us some alternative places to spend a night. We'll explore a restaurant where you eat in an Amish buggy and go aboard a giant lake freighter. We'll go bargain hunting in out-of-the-way country stores. And best of all, all of these destinations are just one tank of gasoline away. I hope you'll join us each night at 6 this week on New Center 8 as our traveling man, Neil Zerker, sets out to prove once more how many interesting things there are to see and do on just a one-tank trip. I'm Virgil Dominic. You know, a decade ago when we started our one-tank trips, one of the first stops we made was in Marietta, Ohio. Well, this year we're headed back to Marietta to see what's new. This is still a riverboat town, but the Valley Gem that has been a tourist mainstay for years is gone, to be replaced later this summer by a new and much larger Valley Gem II. There are many boats still here. The old W.P. Snyder docked permanently at the Ohio River Museum. The Becky Thatcher showboat that will begin a new season soon. And there is this boat, the Claire E, a floating bed and breakfast. That's right. You can spend the night sleeping on the river for just $60, and that's for two people. That's in three staterooms. I have one room with a double bed, one room with two singles, and then the last room has one single. Although the Clary is beautifully furnished from its main salon with a wood-burning stove to its top deck rooms with porthole views of Marietta, this is still a working sternweeder. But because of insurance restrictions, Nolan cannot take his overnight guests for a ride. However, there are still other things to do. I have five fishing poles, so you can fish in the Muskingum River, which has the supposedly world's best catfish fishing. <laughs> Sunbathing also is good if the sun's out. While you can have breakfast on board the boat, you might want to have dinner in this restaurant. The Levee House is perched right on the edge of the Ohio River. Once a tough riverfront saloon, it's been transformed into a fine restaurant serving meals made from scratch in their kitchens. To ensure freshness, they even have an herb garden just outside the front door. Just a 20-minute ride downriver is Belpre, Ohio, and the Middleton Doll Factory. Here you can take a free tour of the facility, operated by famed doll sculptor Lee Middleton and her husband, retired Rocky River Police Sergeant Lloyd Middleton. The lifelike creations are much in demand by doll collectors and children. There's also a factory outlet store here where you can buy discontinued dolls at a great savings. Marietta, Ohio, still a fun place to visit and still just a one tank trip. I'm Neil Zerker, New Center 8. we're headed for western New York where the buffalo roam. That's right, buffalo or bison if you prefer. Hundreds of them. In fact, this is the largest buffalo ranch in the eastern United States. Over 400 of the great creatures on 600 acres here in Ellicottville, New York. Tours of the ranch are available and if you've ever wanted to try a buffalo burger or steak, they sell the meat here at the ranch or will ship it to you. 
Just down the road is Salamanca, New York, the only town in America located on an Indian reservation. The Seneca Indians own and operate many of the businesses here, like American Indian Crafts, where you can find authentic Indian blankets, Native American pottery, and pipes, and many other items. One of the big incentives for shopping here is since it's on the reservation, you don't have to pay New York State tax on the things you buy. Just north of here is the small community of Ashford Hollow. You really can't miss it. This is the site that greets you. This is Griffith Sculpture Park, a collection of works that are placed in fields, in woods, and even in lakes. They sprawl over 400 mountaintop and valley-filled acres. Some of the pieces are over 30 feet tall. Most are the work of this man, Larry Griffiths, who has spent more than a quarter of a century creating this unusual park. Admission is free, the park is open from 9 in the morning until dark. If we hurry, we'll just have time to catch the train. This is the New York and Lake Erie Railroad in Gowanda, New York. This is more than just an excursion train. Here in the dining car each Saturday evening and Sunday afternoon, you can experience a delicious meal while the scenery of western New York rolls by your window. The menu offers such things as rock Cornish hens to a pound and a half Maine lobster. As for the cost, the dinner train varies with the entree and is in the range of about $20 to $25. Each trip covers about 30 miles in four hours and passes through the Seneca Indian Reservation. A trip to western New York by rail or by car is a great destination for a one-tank trip. I'm Neil Zerker, News Center 8. gasoline pump in front of the store sets the stage. This is Funk, Ohio, and inside the general store is a well-worn checkerboard where you're welcome to play before the wood-burning stove. But this is more than just a general store. This is what they call the Funk Mall. One part of the building houses antiques, another sporting goods, still another offers homemade crafts from a three-county area. Need an ironing board, bring it up. Tighten four holes, two on a side, and you have an ironing board. But if visiting Funk is like stepping into yesterday, let's drive even further into the past for a place to sleep tonight. These are real teepees, just like the kind used by Native Americans. And you can rent one for a night or for a week here at Lake Wampasum, south of Worcester. This teepee rents for $20 for two people, and then additional persons are children a dollar and a half each, and adults four dollars each. Now keep in mind that the teepees have no electricity, no running water, and no heat. If that's not for you, you might consider running this A-frame cottage they offer that has all the modern amenities and more. Lake Wapason actually has five lakes, and you don't have to have a fishing license to fish in their stocked lakes since this is a privately owned campground. We hear a lot about Amish-style restaurants, but just down the road in Shreve, Ohio, you'll find the real thing. This is this Dutch Essen House the Dutch eating place. Three-fourths of the folks who work here are from Amish households. The food is authentic and plentiful, and obviously made from scratch. You can help yourself to fresh soup cooking in front of an open fire, or have your all-you-can-eat dinner served to you in an authentic Amish buggy. While you're eating, you can watch a couple of ladies working on an Amish quilt, or smell the aroma of these freshly baked cinnamon rolls as they come out of the oven in the restaurant bake shop. Good food and lots of it here. Before we leave Wayne County, a final stop to do a little bargain hunting. This is the country outlet in Dalton, Ohio. While they sell new furniture and locally made Amish crafts, they also specialize in selling return furniture from a nationally known department store. Some of it with minor flaws, but the savings are impressive. Wayne County, the gateway to Ohio's Amish area with much, much more to see and do, and it's only a one-tank trip. I'm Neil Zerker, News Center 8. Tourism experts say that the new portside development is the main reason Toledo, Ohio has become one of the favorite stops for Ohioans on a holiday. But there's a lot more to see and do here. Something old is the newest thing in town. This beautiful Victorian mansion is Toledo's first bed and breakfast. Just walking through this magnificent old building will give you an idea why it took two full years to build. 
and the bedrooms, each decorated differently, but keeping the flavor of the 19th century. Each comes not only with a full bath, but a small kitchen. The cost is reasonable. Two people can spend the night for $65, but if you'd like even more luxury? We do have a, uh, a $99 special that we offer, which is the room for the night for two, and that includes a, a wood-burning fire in the fireplace, and hors d'oeuvres, and uh, a beverage, and then breakfast in the morning, either served in your room or here in the drawing room. Let's take a drive over to the river. I've got something new I'd like to show you. Back in 1911, the lake freighter Willis Boyer made its very first trip from Toledo. Today, 78 years later, it's a museum docked here at International Park. At 617 feet in length, it was for many years the largest ship on the Great Lakes. You can explore the entire ship from the pilot house high above the deck to the many holds that once carried grain, ore, and coal. The Boyer is open weekends during the spring and fall and seven days a week in the summer. You'll find a lot of local folks coming out of Manos Greek Restaurant. The folks who live here say this is one of the best in town, especially if you like ethnic foods. The Greek salad is enormous, the chicken oregano and stuffed zucchini delicious. And the price? Most dinner entrees are under $10. Let's turn in here for some bargain hunting. This is the Libby Glass Outlet, right here at the factory, where you can buy discontinued glassware as well as overruns, sometimes for a considerable savings. Just one more reason that Toledo, Ohio is near the top of the list when you're looking for some place to go on a one-tank trip. I'm Neil Zerker, News Center 8. Be sure to bring your camera when you come to Ashtabula County. That's because this is the covered bridge capital of Ohio, and you can find these scenic treasures hidden away on back roads all over this county. There are a total of 14 of them, and the county engineer's office in Jefferson offers a free map that will tell you how to find each of the bridges. If you're going to see them all, you might want to stay all night. How about a bed and breakfast right on the edge of Lake Erie? This is the Otto Court Bed and Breakfast in Geneva on the Lake. Many of the bedrooms overlook the beach, as does the big dining room. It's the kind of a place where you can really relax. If you'd like to do a little prospecting, then stop by the Noema Gem Mine here in Austinburg. For $2, you get a bucket of stones that have been gathered from rock and gem dealers all over the world. But don't expect to find something like the Hope Diamond. Uh, we're not advertising it as a get-rich-quick thing. It's fun. You know, you'll get your $2 worth, you're guaranteed that. Most of the stones here are discards from gem makers, but every once in a while, someone does make a lucky find. I saw somebody take a ruby out of here that was worth a hundred or two. Incidentally, if you do find anything of value, Noema Gems also operates a shop where they'll teach you to make jewelry out of your find. In Ashtabula County, you'll also find the large and small of many things, like Boston Rockers. This giant chair has been a landmark at the outskirts of Austinburg for many years. Just one more reason to bring along your camera. We also found this Boston rocker in Ashtabula County at a place called Inchburg, USA, in Geneva. Everything here is made in a one-inch scale to its real-life counterpart. Proof that it's a small world after all. Ashtabula County has much more to offer. Try it. It's just a one-tank trip. You know, our trips aren't really over. I hope in the weeks to come you'll join me as we find new roads to travel, new places to visit, new things to see and do new memories to keep, because that's what one tank trips are really all about, memories. Memories that last long after the journeys are over. I'm Neil Zerker, New Center 8. Happy travels. The Deed Picking Company has been a fixture in Bucyrus, Ohio for over a century. In fact, little has changed in this last American handmade copper kettle plant since it was constructed in 1874. The process is exactly the same, yes. Longevity is the watchword here. Helen's father, Robert Picking, who died at age 103 and a half, worked here for 82 years. And many of these workers apprenticed under their own fathers who also hammered copper here. 
business is so good that while the big commercial orders are being filled, Mrs. Neff admits that the smaller decorative things they make are falling a bit behind. But I have to admit that we're two years behind with the other, the other objects. Free tours of the plant are available Monday through Friday. By the way, Bucyrus calls itself the bratwurst capital of America. They even have a festival here celebrating the German sausage. Tons of it are made, and the best they say comes from Carly's Bratwurst, a company here that makes it and sells it year-round. If you'd like to try a brat sandwich, you can't do better than the sandwich shop downtown. Here they make the sandwich the old-fashioned way, with a slice of onion and a pickle. Just outside of town is a farm, and if you call ahead, Bob Bellamy will stop working long enough to invite you to sit down under a tree in his backyard, and he'll show you some of his handmade dulcimers that he sells. He calls his backyard craft prairie wind dulcimers, and he makes them, obviously, more for a love of creating something beautiful than for the money. <laughs> I'm not going to log them hours. I don't like to add it up, because then I realize how little I'm making on <laughs> But for the real treat, it's when Bob demonstrates his hammer dulcimer, which he also plays at weddings and parties. The cost of the dulcimers start at $150, but a visit to Bob's farm and the pleasure of his company is free. Bucyrus, Ohio, a pleasant place to look at the real Ohio in just a one-tank trip. I'm Neil Zerker, News Center 8. started and to visit a company that wants America to have a national musical instrument, the kazoo. Here's Neil in a one tank trip. It rains sometimes in Buffalo, but that doesn't stop the crowds lining up to go aboard the largest collection of warships on the Great Lakes. This is the Buffalo Navy Park, permanent home of the nation's first guided missile cruiser, the USS Little Rock. This ship once carried 1,500 men and is historically important because it marks the transition from naval guns to guided missiles. And there's even more to see. Our most recent addition to the park is the USS Croker SS-246. Also here you'll find the destroyer USS Sullivan's from World War II, a Navy PT boat and numerous airplanes, and a museum of model boats tracing the career of John Paul Jones. If you're a Cleveland Indians fan and would like to see some possible future Indians, then visit the brand new Pilot Field Stadium here. The Bisons are the Indians farm team, and the stadium is one of the newest in the country. If you've ever eaten buffalo wings, you know they were created here in Buffalo in the Anchor Bar back in the 1960s. And celebrities from around the country have come here to eat the buffalo wings. Just how good are they? Well, consider the number they sell each month. 63,000 pounds a month. You'll want to take some of these home with you. On the way back to Ohio, make a quick stop in Eden, New York, at the home of the original American Kazoo. The factory has been on this location since 1916, and it's the last metal kazoo maker in America. You can peek into the factory to watch them cutting out the kazoos. There's even a small museum with kazoos of the past. Why has the kazoo lasted all these years? They can pick it up and they can hum, and if they can hum, they can play a kazoo. That's my kind of instrument. Just pick it up and start humming. <laughs> Incidentally, the company's trying to gain public support to make the kazoo the National Musical Instrument of America. In Buffalo, New York, a lot to see and do, and just a one-tank trip. I'm Neil Zerker, News Center 8. What a guy, huh? I want to know, though, why he never brings back the food, but we get these kazoos. We never this. see the food. <laughs> Gets to the parking lot occasionally. It's pretty tasty, though. If you... He also provided us with fascinating facts and trivia. And one of the major points in this, it says, if you can hum, you can play a kazoo, folks. My kind of instrument. And that's our news at 6. The CBS Evening News is next. Thanks for sharing your time with us. Little of Ohio. Here's Neil on a one-tank trip. Of all the places we travel, flea markets are one of the most popular stops. And if there's a flea market capital in Ohio, it has to be here in South Amherst. They have not one, but two major markets. Johnny's is the new kid on the block, just opening this year on Wednesday, Saturdays, and Sundays. You'll find the traditional things, from cast-off bicycles to wooden tulips. 
just down the road, actually only a few hundred feet away, is the big daddy of flea markets in this area, Jamie's. Here, a sunny day can attract hundreds of sellers and literally thousands of buyers that create an almost carnival midway type atmosphere. The best part, admission is free. Just bring money to buy all those bargains, like this one. This is a uh, gasoline iron. A gasoline powered iron? Yeah, it's, uh, it's made by Coleman. And uh, I think mainly it's used by the Amish people, people that uh, are strict Amish and don't use any electricity at all. You, and, you, uh, you got somebody who's going to buy that? Well, I hope, they, <laughs> I hope they buy it. I don't know. I'm trying to sell it. The things you find here range from the beautiful to the, well, they say that one person's junk is another's treasure. Aside from the shopping, there's also free entertainment at a flea market as merchants try to attract you to their booths. When it's time to eat, lots of folks head across the street to the Farmer Boy restaurant. Here the decor is early barnyard. In fact, you can even eat in a horse stall. The food is good. Prices range from four to ten dollars. But back to the shopping. Lawn and garage sales spring up in this town on Wednesday and Saturdays like flowers after a spring rain. If you're tired of the crowds at the flea market, you may find bargain hunting up and down the streets can also be rewarding. South Amherst, the flea market capital of Ohio, and just a one-tank trip. I'm Neil Zerker, News Center 8. And that's our news at 6, the CBS Evening News. the Genesee River make downtown Rochester, New York as pretty as a picture. But that's as it should be. This was the home of George Eastman, founder of the Kodak camera that gave photography to the common man. His mansion is today the home of the International Museum of Photography. Here you'll find original cameras built and used by not only Eastman, but Edison and even Daguerre. The galleries are filled with photos taken by the world's most famous photographers, and there's this room where you can touch and handle cameras and photo equipment that goes back to the beginning of photography. Intention is that people of all ages can come here, figure out a little bit about how photography a long time ago actually worked and the difficulties, and also use and handle some modern equipment as well and get a hand for how they can take better pictures today. Springtime's a beautiful time to visit Rochester. The town's famous lilac bushes are in full bloom. There's even a lilac festival. Oh, I just bury myself right in them. The Rochester Philharmonic is known throughout the world, just one more reason to visit this town. But there's even more. This is Lollipop Farm, operated by the Humane Society of Rochester. It's an actual farm where you can pet both imaginary and real animals, like llamas, deer, and rabbits. And best of all, some of the residents here, like dogs, cats, rabbits, gerbils, and even guinea pigs, can be adopted, and you can take them home. And then there is this place. The House of Guitars claimed to be the largest music store in the world under one roof. They sell guitars here. I mean, they really sell guitars here, old and new ones. Hundreds of national recording artists are always writing us or calling us on the phone for, do you have this old Fender 1956? But it's not only guitars. They sell all kinds of musical instruments. They also operate a recording company. And then there is the record department. Um, there's over four million albums, tapes, and CDs all together. They run out of room. The records are even displayed on the ceiling. The House of Guitars in Rochester, New York, a good place to visit. And just a one-tank trip. I'm Neil Zerker, News Center 8. This week as we hit the road with our traveling man, Neil Zerker, as he sets out on a one-tank trip to Sugar Creek, Ohio. Sugar Creek is a mixture of early America and old Switzerland. Tucked away here in a corner of Tuscarawas County, it's the kind of town that still has an old stone drinking fountain. A place where the Swiss heritage even carries over to such things as gasoline pumps and even the public telephone booth. Just a mile outside of town, you can still buy kettle-made potato chips here at Tripp's Chips. You're invited to tour their one-room factory might even find Tripp and his brother J.P. helping out. 
Each of the boys has a potato chip named after him. Their mother claims people love their potato chips because of the way they're still made. We fry everything in cast iron kettles. By the way, while you're here, you can buy a bag of hot chips right out of the kettle. There's another new addition to the countryside here, Beachy's Country Chalet Restaurant, where you can sample both the local Swiss and Amish foods. All of it made from scratch in the kitchen of this sparkling new eating place. But one of the nicest additions to Ohio's Little Switzerland is the Ohio Central Railroad. This is the first year the 1912 steam-driven train has begun making the run from Sugar Creek to Baltic, a ride with much to see. You go through some floodplain area, it offers a beautiful uh, variety of wildlife, plus we have a lot of the farmlands, much of which are owned and operated by the Amish. You can see their uh, horses in the fields and their buggies along the highway. The train makes four trips a day, each one about an hour long, Monday through Saturday. They do not operate on Sundays. No reservations are needed. Simply stop in at the Sugar Creek Railroad Depot and purchase your ticket for a ride on a bit of America's past. And best of all, it's just a one-tank trip. I'm Neil Zerker, News Center 8 in Sugar Creek, Ohio. Guess what? <laughs> <laughs> Neil came through. <laughs> Last week we said Neil never brings us any of the food. Yeah, he did. He brought us the potato chips. He, he left us a note. The chips are from Tripp and JR, the two little boys the chips were named after. For the folks here after the show, that's us. And they just wanted to show us how good the chips are. <laughs> and the fly swatters were given to him on the trip he went to the flea market. I guess these are flea swatters, yes. right? Okay, Neil, Can thank I, you. Yes, thank you very much. And, and the chips are mighty good. They certainly are. Now we know what we're having for dinner. Don't stuff we? gets here, but we never get it. Yeah. it gets yeah. I think it gets sidetracked to Neil's home sometimes. We're going to guard these. That's our news at 6. The CBS Evening News with Dan Rather is next. Thank you for sharing your time with us, and we hope to see you right back here tonight at 11 when we'll be stuffed with potato chips. Have a good evening. Casket and a town with a whole street of bed and breakfast. That's the destination this week of our traveling man, Neil Zerker, as he sets out on a one tank trip to Ship Shawana, Indiana. It's just across the Ohio line in the rolling Indiana countryside that you find this tiny crossroads that draws thousands every week. This is the Shipshawana, Indiana Auction and Flea Market, held each Tuesday and Wednesday year-round. While they don't claim to be the biggest flea market in the world, it's one of the largest. You got some over a thousand booths, and the acreage actually 15 acres of flea market. And there is the auction house. If the Tower of Babel still exists, it is here, as auctioneers fill the room with their chants. Right now we're using 11 today. It's 11 and 12 in the summer. All at the same time? All at the same time, all trying to get the people's attention. And what do they buy? Everything, from a coronet, to a stove, to an old, apparently used casket that incidentally brought just $15 in the auction. Outside, bring along some good walking shoes because there are literally miles of aisles lined with flea market booths, offering just about anything you can imagine. Admission is free, but bring along lots of money because the bargains are hard to turn down. There is only one small motel in the community, so the folks here have turned to encouraging bed and breakfast. One enterprising family has purchased all the homes here on Morton Street and turned them into lodgings. But on flea market day, it's still hard to find a room. It's a good idea, though, if they are coming on a Monday or Tuesday to, to call at least six to eight weeks in advance. But uh, even then, we help. We try to get them a room somewhere. Incidentally, this is the third largest settlement of the Amish in the world, and their quaint presence is visible on just about every street. A relaxing place to visit, and just a one-tank trip across the Ohio border to the west. I'm Neil Zerker, New Center 8, Ship Shawana, Indiana. What would you do with that casket? Use it as a planter for dead plants. Yeah, that's our news at 6, the CBS evening. All just one tank away and the destination of our traveling man, Neil Zerker. If you have ever dreamed of the beauty and grace of sailing, you can do it here at Sandusky Bay. In just one weekend, the folks here at Adventure Plus Yacht School at Battery Park can teach you the basics of sailing. 
about 10 hours, you can learn the essentials of how to get a boat out of the dock, get the sails up, sail it through the different points of sailing, sails down, back in the dock. By the way, if you're already a qualified sailor, you can charter one of their many yachts, with or without a captain, for an unforgettable vacation of sailing Lake Erie. For getting around Sandusky and learning a lot about this town, try the new Bay Area Trolley Charters. They offer customized sightseeing tours for groups. And for a place to stay away from the glitter of the hotels and motels, consider Captain Montague's Guest House, a bed and breakfast here in Huron. This graceful old home, once the residence of a lake's captain, has been restored to the charm of the late 1800s. Each of the bedrooms has a private bath, and there's a lovely swimming pool just outside the door. Rates run about $65 a night. When it's time to eat, some Duskians often head for this neighborhood restaurant and pub. The sign says Earnburgers. The new owner is changing the name to Vicky's. Fresh Lake Erie perch, fresh, not frozen, is served daily on sandwiches, lunches, and even a perch lover's platter. Prices are very reasonable, and the food is good. Now to wrap up this trip, let's go flying. This is North Coast Parasail that operates out of Battery Park. You strap on a harness on this boat, attach it to the parasail, and then, like a kite, are whisked into the air on the end of a 600-foot cable. It gives you an unforgettable ride and a bird's eye view of Sandusky Bay. How safe is it? We've flown an 83-year-old grandmother who shot two rolls of film, changed film up in the air, had a great time. Nave says some paraplegics have taken the ride as well as other physically challenged people. In fact, if you can sit in a park swing, you can fly the parasail. That was a ball! Sandusky, Ohio's vacation land, and just a one-tank trip. I'm Neil Zerker, New Center 8. Boy, did that look like fun. Yeah, Neil's our own Indiana Jones, you yeah. know. I thought for a minute he'd be writing us. <laughs> That's our News at 6, and the CBS Evening News is next. Thank you for sharing your time with us. We hope to see you back here tonight at 11 o'clock. Have a good evening. The nation of our traveling man, Neil Zerker, as he sets out tonight for a one-tank trip to Indiana. If you're looking for a different kind of resort, a quiet place, a place in the country, a spot that whispers for your attention instead of shouting, you'll find it at Bear Creek Farms, just across the Ohio line in Indiana. Here you'll find a street from the 1920s, a bakery with fresh sweets, a lollipop factory, and a host of other stores to wander and shop in. You can just lay on the edge of the lake and soak up the warmth of an Indiana summer, or there are horse-drawn carriages to ride in. Or you can rent a bicycle to tour the neighborhood on your own power because there's much to see from the welcoming town center to the lovely country church. There are miniature horses, a soon to open old car museum, and when it comes time to sleep, you have a whole list of choices from an authentic teepee perched on the edge of the lake for $10 a night to the barracks here at Fort Strong, a recreation of the forts that once dotted this part of the old frontier. A night in the barracks room costs $20. But if roughing it is not for you, then you can opt for one of these brand new farm cottages that are really modern motel units, complete with air conditioning, bathroom, and TV. And the price is right. And, uh, they rent for $35 a night, and they include breakfast at the uh, Maxwell House Cafe for two people the following morning. They also offer a three-day, two-night package for two people that includes motel, meals, and a whole lot more for just $99. Incidentally, there are three restaurants on the grounds, as well as this 800-seat theater that will host some nationally known stars this summer and daily offers show business veteran, comedian Buddy Graff. You know something? My wife's got a nice even disposition. You know that? Even disposition? Yeah, miserable all the time. And a group of talented professional musicians, singers, and dancers. Bear Creek Farms, a different kind of resort and just a one-tank trip. I'm Neil Zerker, New Center 8 in Bryant, Indiana. And that's our news at 6. The CBS Evening News with Dan Rather is next. Thank you for sharing. Who sets out to prove that being all wet isn't all bad. Here's Neil in a one-tank trip.
When the temperature soars, head for the beach. And in southern Ohio, that means this huge water park, the beach, on Interstate 71, just north of Cincinnati. We are the largest water park in Ohio, and we have 28 different activities, something for the whole family. Getting wet is really fun here, from a giant water slide to trying to cross some giant blue water lily. The name of the game is Water, Water Everywhere. If you're adventurous, you can ride a tube down a man-made mountain rapid, ending in a pool at the bottom. And this ride, looks like the end of a sewer pipe, dumps you out about 10 feet over a 10-foot deep pool. And there's this rope slide out over a pool with a sudden ending. But what's the favorite ride here? And my favorite ride is Bonsai. It's a speed slide. We had a contest the other day, and the person that went down, I think it was like 7.5 seconds. Covering a story like this can be a hot, wet job. Let's face it, someone has to do it. This ride is called the Little Miami. It lets you slowly drift completely around the perimeter of the park. Just across the street, literally, is the National Collegiate Football Hall of Fame. Here you find mementos of college football greats, and the list of enshrinees from George Gipp of Notre Dame right down to the present. They also have a unique display for those of us who play football from the armchair, a chance to kick a field goal, and hear the cheers of a crowd. Let's get wet again. Next door is King's Island. One of the new rides is guaranteed to get you wet, whether or not you ride the ride. This is Amazon Falls, and it's debatable who gets wetter. The folks in the boat, those in the bridge watching. Incidentally, King's Island has also installed its own water park called the Waterworks, with many more ways to keep you wet and cool on the hottest of summer days. It's all just a one-tank trip. I'm Neil Zerker, New Center 8 at King's Island. He was dry. He's still dry. How did he do amazing. that? Amazing. Tomorrow. The, the amazing Neil Zerker. Well, that is all of our time for this edition of New Center 8. Thank you for sharing your time with us. And stay tuned for the CBS Evening News next. We'll spawn the moon. New Center 8's Neil Zerker this week sets out on a one-tank trip to follow Ohio's path to the moon. You don't have to drive very far to find a connection to Armstrong's moon flight. The Lewis Research Center of NASA here in Cleveland played a role since the start of the space program. You can find models of all the different ships, as well as moon rocks, and even a gift store where you can buy astronaut ice cream and other space souvenirs. The next stop on Ohio's moon path is in Dayton, Ohio. The Air Force Museum recently doubled its size by opening a new wing. This is the world's largest military museum dedicated to flight You'll also find mementos of our trek to the moon. We've got a moon rock. We have a piece of fabric from the original Kitty Hawk flyer that Neil Armstrong took to the moon on his first flight up there. Incidentally, the Air Force Museum is still the best tourist bargain in Ohio. It's open year-round, and it's free. Our final stop is the little Ohio town where Neil Armstrong grew up. Wapakoneta, Ohio, and the Neil Armstrong Space Museum. Here you'll find many things that trace Armstrong's life and career, first as a Navy pilot, later as a test pilot, and finally astronaut who flew both Gemini and Apollo missions, which culminated in his taking the immortal one small step for man, one giant step for mankind as he walked on the moon. The museum is a relatively new one, and new items are still being added. In the past year, we have gotten a few uh, of the items that uh, Neil had when he was a child and also some of the other memorabilia that was given to him on his world tour. You can see such things as the watch that Armstrong wore on the moon, a piece of moon rock he brought back, and many of the decorations and awards that were showered on him from all over the world. But don't look for Neil Armstrong to be here on the anniversary of his flight. He has been invited uh, for the celebration, but the way it looks now, I don't think he's going to make it. Armstrong, incidentally, still lives in Ohio and nearby Lebanon, where he's associated with a computer firm, and believe it or not, on August 5th, 1989, will turn 59 years of age. Neil Zerker, New Center 8, on a one-tank trip, tracing our path to the moon. 
And look what Neil brought us in, along with a little message which I'm going to read you folks. Dear gang, in keeping with my new policy of sharing the goodies with you, please find one each package of astronaut ice cream I purchased for you at the <laughs> gift shop at the Neil Armstrong Museum. Oh. Now, the banner, let's get a shot of the banner, oh. which they assure right. will become a collector's item. You'll have to share, folks, because they do cost 50 cents a piece. <laughs> you know. In, enjoy the ice cream. wonder how that would go with the what chocolate syrup. Neil, way to go. Thank you very Thank much, you. Neil. I just have to figure out how to get in it into a cone. Yeah, or if we can put chocolate syrup on it. Yeah. Might be good. Well, that's our news at 6, the CBS Evening News with Dan Rather. And a destination that is a chocoholic's dream. That's tonight's One Tank Trip. Here's our traveling man, Neil Zerker. there was only some way to put the smell on television. That wonderful smell of fresh cocoa that permeates the air here in Hershey, Pennsylvania, Chocolate Town, USA. The big industry here is candy, and you're reminded of it everywhere. Even the street lights resemble the company's chocolate kisses, and the street names should also come as no surprise. The town's major summertime attraction is Hershey World Theme Park, 80 acres of well-manicured flower beds in a modern amusement park, from Kissing Tower, where the windows resemble Hershey Kisses, to the square in the center of the park where visiting celebrities have left their handprints in concrete. And their century-old carousel is a historic treasure. But there is even more. The Hershey Hotel, a grand reminder of the luxury of the 1920s, still welcomes guests to its hilltop, where the view from the guest rooms rivals that of some Mediterranean hotels. And there is the famous Hershey Gardens, hundreds of acres of formal gardens that offer a quiet spot where the smell of cocoa battles with the fragrance of roses. Incidentally, it's easy to get around the Hershey complex. One way to save money is to park in the free parking lots and to take the free shuttles which run every few minutes and deliver you right to the front gate of all the attractions. The world of chocolate is a must for all visitors. It's also free. A Disney-like ride through a simulated factory where the candy making process is explained with exhibits, lights, and music. And before you leave, visit the mini chocolate supermarket where you can buy every product made by Hershey by the piece or by the cart. My husband's favorite Reese's Cups. Laurel's favorite of the Hershey bars. Marty, what are your favorites? Kit Kats. Candy kisses. I love kisses. <laughs> I've never seen so much candy in my whole life. Well, I have my candy supply for the year. Well, maybe just one more for the trip home. Neil Zerker on a one tank trip to Hershey, Pennsylvania. Some for us, too. I love his new policy of sharing the loot. Me, too. I can't wait till next week. That's our news at 6. See you at 11. Bye-bye. Halfway between the glitz and grandeur of Niagara Falls and the hustle and bustle of the Broadway of Canada, Toronto, is the industrial city of Hamilton. For years, it was one of the steel capitals of the world. Now it's shining up its image and showing itself off as a new tourist spot, only minutes from two of Canada's biggest tourist attractions. The Royal Botanical Gardens here in Hamilton are magnificent. They stretch over an unbelievable 2,000 acres just beside the downtown. The gardens grew out of the Great Economic Depression of the 1930s. It used to be a quarry, and it was a makework project during the Depression. And uh, it's just... How many acres are we talking about? Altogether, there's about 2,500 acres. The real beauty of these gardens is that they are only minutes from the downtown, easily accessible, and best of all, admission is free. Hamilton also has a reputation for good restaurants and good food. One of the most popular is Benny's family-type establishment that, while it appears to be upscale, offers bargain prices, and best of all, some imaginative dishes, like their nightly green plate specials. They range anywhere from a beef wellington to a uh, uh, steak Diane to a lobster thermidor. They range, depending on the uh, market, anywhere from $8.95 to $13.95. The night we ate at Benny's, the bill for three of us came to just $25, 
And that was before we got a discount of 15% for using U.S. money to pay our bill. A real bargain with great food. There's more to see and do here, from the stately Dundurn Castle, once home to a Prime Minister of Canada, to the Hamilton Military Museum, where youngsters are given a gentle history lesson by letting them dress up in a replica uniform of a real British red coat. To your eye. Here we go. Aim, and here it comes. You got it. Hamilton, Ontario, from its farm market with food from around the world, to its giant underground shopping malls. So you'll find a lot to see and a lot to do. And best of all, it's really just a one-tank trip. I'm Neil Zerker, New Center 8 in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. They still come in buses and cars from all over the world to see Mooney Warther's work. This is the Warther Museum in Dover, Ohio. Mooney, called the world's master carver, is gone now, but his family carries on. Just last year, they opened this beautiful new expanded museum to better display Warther's intricate carvings of ivory and teak of the history of steam propulsion. And now you can visit the Warther Cutlery Factory beneath the museum and watch craftsmen make the knives that have become prized by cooks the world over but we could never create what he did or how he did it. He was a genius, we are not. The Canton Classic Car Museum is still rolling along. Since our first visit, the museum has nearly doubled in size and an additional wing is about to be opened that will still further increase the size of the exhibit that includes such things as this bulletproof police car from the 1930s. Some people referred to Canton as Little Chicago. This is a must for those in the family that like old cars. It was 20 years ago this summer that this haunting theme filled this amphitheater. This is Trumpet in the Land, Ohio's first outdoor drama that portrays a sad chapter of Ohio history, the massacre of 96 peaceful Christian Indians near the spot by American militiamen during the Revolutionary War. A veteran of 18 of the years the play has been running is General Manager Margaret Bonamico says her staff is constantly working to improve the show. The scenery is different. The scenery has changed about three times since, since the first year. We've added a mountain on stage. We've added an, a permanent fort. So step back into history here on this hillside in the Tuscarawas Valley as for the 20th season, Trumpet in the Land brings echoes of the past into our lives. Neil Zerger, New Center 8, on a one-tank trip to New Philadelphia, Ohio. day cruise aboard this boat costs less than twenty dollars and while they suggest reservations it's often possible to buy a ticket just as you board here in Sandusky. The journey starts with a slow cruise across Sandusky Bay passing other attractions like this North Coast Parasail ride. The speed picks up as the boat eases into Lake Erie and an hour's run to Kelly's Island but that's only the beginning. We go by the marinas in Sandusky, we go by Cedar Point, by Johnson's Island, Marblehead Peninsula. Our first stop, downtown Kelly's Island. A lot of ways to get around here, on foot, or on this guided tour train. Alrighty, I'd like to welcome you to Island Tours. My name is Madonna. Bikes you can rent by the hour to see the island under your own power, or you might like to drive your own little car, like these golf carts, to see the back roads of the island. Be sure to stop for a look at the famous glacial grooves. And the limestone is actually part of a, an old seabed. And as you walk around, look very closely because it's full of, of fossils. There's also the Kelly Mansion that is open to tours. Across the street, mysterious boulders with ancient inscriptions adds a note of mystery to this largest U.S. island in Lake Erie. All too soon, the two hours is up, and it's time to reboard the Good Time One for our next destination, Putin Bay. On board, there is music the passing scenery as we once more head out into Lake Erie. 
past fishing boats that crowd the western basin of the lake. There's a three-hour stop here at Putten Bay, plenty of time to visit quaint shops in this little village, or to even rent one of these unique bicycles to see the island. The trip goes on for another two hours of cruising Lake Erie Islands before returning to Sandusky. I opted to leave the good time at Putten Bay and to board the new Jet Express for a fast ride across the bay to Port Clinton. It costs $7.50 for a one-way ride on the Jet Express, and the boat runs until midnight every night. A one-tank trip to an island-hopping vacation in Western Lake Erie. Musical chairs ever since it arrived. The Bounty changed docks for the third time today. Its original location in the midst of the North Coast Harbor was nixed by FAA officials because of the danger to planes from the ship's 10-story high mast. Then it docked at the Cleveland Port Authority, and finally today was moved to near the stadium where it will be open to the public tomorrow. I got a tour today with a personal escort by Captain Bly himself, portrayed by actor guide Robert Dawson, whose parents are from Shaker Heights. I provide living history aboard this vessel. Uh, we believe that uh, this was an ideal format to have uh, costumed you know, tour guides and to give them an accurate uh, indication of what happened 200 years ago. Walking these decks, you can almost feel the presence of actors. Actors like Charlton Heston stumping this same deck as the pirate Long John Silver. As you stand here on the deck, if you close your eyes, you can almost hear the snap and the crackle of the sails as they fill. You can almost hear the lush music. You can almost see Marlon Brando and Trevor Howard mutiny on the bounty as the ship took off in the history and legend. If you're a movie buff, this ship is loaded with nostalgia. This wheel uh, that I've got my hand on right now was used in the 1935 version as well. So this has been used by Clark Gable, Charles Lawton, Marlon Brando, Trevor Howard, Gordon Jackson. The costume guides will all be in place this weekend to pipe you aboard and show you what shipboard life in the time of Captain Bly was all about. On Sunday night, the bounty will sail off into the sunset, taking with it the memories of Captain Bly, Fletcher Christian, and all the other characters of history and of legend. Neil Zerker, New Center 8, on board HMS Bounty, Cleveland Harbor. And up next on New Center 8, John... As you gaze across the fields on a misty morning, it's almost like gazing across time itself. The first harvest of the year, gathered by the Amish as they have been gathering the harvest for centuries. The signature of this land, the sound of buggy wheels and horses' hooves, echo of years gone by. A piece of history frozen in time. This is Middlefield, Ohio, only minutes from Cleveland, but here you find yesterday, dry goods stores like Spectre's, where bolts of fabric provide a rainbow to the somber dress of the Amish shoppers. Bargains can be found here since many of the fabrics on sale are seconds or overruns. Here you can still find the simple headgear of the farmer. Across the street is the old village railroad depot, now a gift shop operated by the local historical society. This also is a unique store. Everything is made by people around the community. We think our folk are very talented and there is some beautiful work to be made, so why go outside of the area when we have it all right here for you? From paintings to handmade quilts to the maple syrup this area is so famous for, you'll find it here at the old depot. Drive along the side roads, don't be afraid of getting lost, lots of friendly people here, and discoveries to be made like the East Clarendon Woodworking Shop at Burton Station. Any, any place you touch, most of my chest, you won't, you'll, it'll feel soft to you as you go around, you won't cut your hands. White invites you to not only visit his store, but his small shop where he lovingly crafts his chests and tables. One more side road to follow, this one to Garrettsville, to take another look at the river here at Garrett's Mill. This landmark has been turned into perhaps the most beautiful ice cream parlor in the state, thanks to Mother Nature and a lot of hard work by the new owners. Right now, ice cream and mill products are the specialty, but there are some long-range plans to add a restaurant inside the mill. A nice place to finish a one-tank trip. Just ...to see what's new. Tonight, Neil revisits two towns famous for popcorn and bologna. 
If there's a small town in Ohio that can call itself the Memorial City, Marion, Ohio could lay claim to that title. There are nearly a dozen major memorials and museums here, from the home of former President Warren G. Harding, to the Harding Tomb, to the first memorial park in the U.S. to honor men who fought in all of our country's wars. And there are the museums, the Stengel True Museum, and even the Wyandotte Popcorn Museum, temporarily housed in this bed and breakfast, which is also a museum. Here you'll find the popcorn machines that once flavored the air at theaters across this country, the popcorn wagons that were a fixture in the parks in downtown of many small towns. This is the newest attraction in Marion, Mike Perry's Bed and Breakfast. This large old Victorian home has been restored to its turn of the century elegance, including authentic gas and electric fixtures. The bedroom boasts original furnishings from 1910, and the rates are about $45 a night per room. But what makes this bed and breakfast unique is that it's located in Perry's private museum of old time music boxes and machines. There is everything from music boxes to the earliest phonographs, all working, all available for the enjoyment of his guests. Now let's go down the road about 12 miles to the crossroads called Walden. You know, in 10 years of traveling, I can't think of any trip that I've made that's drawn more attention than the one I made to Waldo, Ohio, to the GNR Tavern, home of the world's best bologna sandwich. It's a half inch of homemade bologna fried on a grill, topped with some Monterey Jack cheese, onion, and pickles. When it's done, the sandwich weighs half a pound. They've been making the fried bologna the same way for the last 27 years. People from all over are still discovering the sandwich. And this is uh, tasting pretty good. Was it worth the drive? Yeah, it sure was. I'm gonna come back here next time I'm down here. I was expecting a bologna sandwich like we have at home, you know, with a bologna about an eighth of an inch thick, and here, it must be nearly a half an inch thick, and it is delicious. Incidentally, when we did our first story here years ago, the sandwich cost 95 cents. It costs nearly twice that now. I guess that's the price of fame. Neil Zerker, New Center 8, Waldo, Ohio, on a one-tank trip. <laughs> he did it again. Thanks, Neil. Thank you. I'll, I'll eat my... You go ahead. You get started, because I have to read this. Okay. All right? Well, Voyager 2 is close in County. Tom Warren. The Twin Maples Guest House offers not only bed and breakfast, but some other amenities. And this is used as a sitting room for everybody to come and congregate. I have a refrigerator here, filled with soft drinks, iced tea, all kinds of big stuff that they can munch on. They have other things like fans by each bed as well as air conditioning, and even a tray of toiletries for those who forget to bring something along. The best thing is the price from $27 to $37 a night, and kids are welcome. If you're an antique fan or a flea market junkie, then you'll want to stop at the Hubbard Liberty Flea and Antique Mall. Hundreds of dealers with just about everything available. We have nothing here but junk, but it's all good usable junk. We have heaters, sweepers, roasters, toasters, pots and pans, electric fans, rings and things for the ladies, tweed birds for the kitties, you name it, we've got it. When it's time to eat, local folks head for Bird Hill Country Inn. Now, in all the years I've been traveling, I've seen some big portions. But you won't believe your eyes when you see this pork cutlet sandwich that fills a meat platter. And when it comes to dessert, don't pass up their mile-high pies. These cream pies are almost a foot tall. Friendly folks and some surprisingly low prices make this a great place to eat. Trumbull County, just a one-tank trip east of Cleveland. I'm Neil Zerker, News Center 8. And Tim Taylor, eat your heart out. The Linville family, who owns the Burke Hill Country Inn, brought us two pies, a cherry vanilla graham cracker. And in his travels, he found a place near Ann Arbor, Michigan, where even he can get his limit of fish. Here's Neil on a one-tank trip. Ann Arbor, Michigan, a familiar name to Ohio State fans. This is the hometown of Michigan State University and also a pretty college town with sidewalk cafes on just about every corner. When it comes to serious eating, a lot of local folks head for this delicatessen, Zingerman's. It's become so popular that they've had to set up tents in the parking lot to seat all the customers. The menu is pure deli, lots of sandwiches, homemade soups, and fresh salads. You first stand in line and order your food, then find a seat someplace and wait for a waitress to call your name. 
Beverly? They claim the secret of their success is that they only use the best ingredients in everything they make. Ann Arbor is also home to two world-famous museums, the Frank Lloyd Wright Architect Collection here at Domino Farms, the pizza company world headquarters, and downstairs is the famous Domino Car Collection of classic and near-classic automobiles. The idea of museums, usually uh, you think of dust and rust and must, but we change the cars a lot. We have no ropes to prevent you from getting near them and looking in them. They have over 100 cars on display and the exhibit has changed almost monthly. Okay, everybody. Picking apples was never more fun than here at Weird's Orchard in nearby Ypsilanti. They welcome kids. They even have a fire truck that takes youngsters on a tour of the orchards. A hay-filled barn where the kids can climb and play. And a petting farm where the little ones can feed the animals as well as pet them. And when it comes time to get the apples, they have this apple wagon that takes you back into the orchard. The season is just starting and it doesn't take long to fill your bag. And what better way to wrap up an autumn weekend than with some fresh caught rainbow trout. And even if you're not a fisherman, you can't miss here at the Spring Valley Trout Farm. These fish are raised in artesian spring fed lakes and the catch is even guaranteed. Because it's uh, ideal water conditions. It's all spring fed 50 degree water. Never had anybody that didn't catch something. I don't, in 20 years, I don't think. Away on a hill. All part of this week's One Tank Trip, here's our traveling man, Neil Zerker. It's that time again, time for slow drives down tree-lined country lanes in search of signs of the approaching autumn. Roscoe Village in Coshocton, the summer crowds of tourists are gone. The leaves on the trees are starting to turn to rust. And along the canal, it is a time for quiet walks while other leaves slip silently into the water. Quiet is tiptoeing back into this village. Storekeepers like Marty Rudabaugh at Wildwood Music now have time to sit and talk, to demonstrate the fine handmade folk instruments she designs and sells. And it was designed by the pioneers so that everybody in the family could play it, from a four-year-old to great-grandma and great-grandpa. Up on a hill overlooking the village is the newest attraction, the 1890 bed and breakfast that captures the charm of the Victorian era, but has modern conveniences like private baths and air conditioning, as well as an abundant breakfast of fresh baked goods from the village bakery. Just outside of town, only a short drive, is Schumacher Farms, where you can grab a wheelbarrow and a shovel and go into the fields to dig your own flowers. Soon, besides flowers, you'll be able to pick pumpkins. The roadside market overflows with the harvest of their fields, a great place to taste the return of autumn. And before we leave, let's tour downtown Coshocton, 4th Street, where memories of other years still live in beautiful homes. It is also here that you'll find the unique Coshocton Antique Center, over two dozen antique dealers under one roof with collectibles from every age. This is the kind of place for even the novice collector because owners Bev and Clark Stewart will help you make sure that you're getting a bargain. We have a library and our own reference books are in this library and we invite people to sit down, have a cup of coffee, a tea, look through our reference books and we try and help them if we can look up anything for them of the value. Goshocton and Roscoe Village, a great autumn destination and easily just a one tank trip. I'm Neil Zerker, News Center 8. And that's our report for this Wednesday evening. For Neil Zerker as he sets off on a one-tank trip to a place some people call almost heaven. Travel Interstate 77 south for about five hours and you come to this spot. The Kanawha Valley where you can watch autumn come to Charleston, the capital of West Virginia. They're reapplying the gold leaf to the dome of their state capital, one of the most beautiful buildings in the United States, copied from the U.S. Capitol. Be sure to take one of the free tours of the building, led by knowledgeable guides. Our West Wing was started in 1924 and finished in 1925. From its magnificent chandelier to its marble halls, it's a nice place to start your visit. A lot of Charlestonians eat here at the General Seafood Establishment, a couple of blocks from the Capitol. You can buy your fish right out of the cooler or 
sit down at one of the many banquet tables to try a bowl of the house specialty, Yugoslavian fish stew. They sell a lot of it. We can sell it by the gallon, quart, pints, cups, bowls, just about anything you need. Now let's drive out of town a ways, about 25 miles. Here, on top of a hillside, is Benedict Hayde Farm, a hideaway that you can rent. It's a century-old farmhouse made of logs with a gigantic porch. Inside, you'll find a modern kitchen with microwave and dishwasher. The formal dining room has chandelier and wood-burning fireplace. The house has all the amenities, even a whirlpool bath. It's available for two people for $150 for a weekend. For an additional amount, you can rent some of the cabins scattered around the hilltop and bring along the whole family. This is Charleston's newest attraction, a multi-million dollar dog racing facility where the greyhounds run year-round. Speedy dogs have become big business here in the Ohio Valley. With a glassed-in air-conditioned clubhouse, the races are held rain or shine. Autumn in West Virginia. One visit, and you'll understand why they call it Almost Heaven. West I'm Neil Zerker, News Center 8, on a one-tank trip. And that's our news at 6, the CBS Evening. Even a place to take some autumn home with you. That's the destination this week of our traveling man, Neil Zerker, as he sets out on another one tank trip. You really don't have to drive far to find the beauty of autumn. Just next door here in southern Lorraine County, you can find both architectural beauty as well as the splendor of Mother Nature. Our first stop, downtown Wellington, for a quick look at their famous town hall built in the 1880s. It was on this square that Archibald Willard was inspired to paint his immortal spirit of 76. So much history resides here that the entire downtown section of Wellington has been placed on the National Register of Historic Places. Drive just south of town to what was once a forest. This is Finley State Park today, and its miles of tree-lined roads will soon be ablaze with every color of the autumn rainbow. Warm days and cool nights of autumn are great for a last camp out of the year, and the lake in the middle of the park is at its loveliest in the fall. Fishermen say this is also one of the best times of year to catch the big ones. The park is open year-round, admission is free. Let's head north a few miles to visit the college town of Oberlin. Get some lunch. <laughs> I don't think I'm ever gonna hang of these things, but one of the nice things about Oberlin are the many unique places to eat such as this little sidewalk cafe where you can have Chinese food with chopsticks or a nice salad and a fresh made bran roll. Lots of good food. And if you'd like to take some autumn home with you, follow me just outside of town to the home of Farmyard Flowers on Plate Road. Here you'll find acres of wildflowers that are the main crop, wildflowers that perfume the autumn air and attract bees intent on gathering the nectar. Wildflowers that will remind you of autumn for weeks and months to come. Debbie Davidson runs Farmyard Flowers and in her shop offers classes on how to make works of art from delicate buds and weeds. Her craft lines the walls and ceilings. She tells us that autumn is a special time for bargains. The last two, three weekends in September on Saturdays and Sundays, um, probably from 11 till dark, if people want to come out to pick their own, they're welcome to come out. What does it cost? Uh, we only charge like 50 cents a dozen. A handful of dried wildflowers can keep alive the memory of autumn into the winter months ahead. Southern Lorraine County, a nice place to watch the changing of the seasons, and it's only a one-tank trip. I'm Neil Zerker, News Center 8. That once affected our lives and the culture they spawned are preserved here at the Henry Ford Museum in Dearborn, Michigan. This is the newest display in this world-famous collection. Everything from a drive-in movie theater, complete with antique cars and a movie, to a diner that once stood on a street corner. The diner so realistic you can almost smell the hamburgers fry. How many people come in here and think this is a working diner? Probably one out of three come in here and think they can order something. There's much more to see here from a lunar automobile to Henry Ford's first effort. There is a collection of huge machinery that dwarfs the visitor and a look back at the mass-produced products that made our lives easier and more productive.
For an additional price, you can line up to visit Greenfield Village next door, with historic buildings gathered from all over the world. This is the newest attraction here at Greenfield Village, the Firestone Farm. Until about four years ago, it was located in Ohio in Columbiana County. Then it was torn down and moved here to Dearborn, Michigan. And there is even more. The Wright Brothers Bicycle Shop moved from Dayton, Ohio. Henry Ford's first automobile assembly plant. For an additional fee, you can climb aboard a horse-drawn carriage for a ride around the village with a knowledgeable guide pointing out the history that now dwells here. They are our interpreters, dressed in period clothing, recreate the household chores of that time period. Or you can purchase a ticket to ride the steam railroad that circles the village and makes a stop at some of the attractions. Or you can just walk and look. Look backward at what America once was, all of it preserved here at Greenfield Village. I'm Neil Zerker, New Center 8, on a one-tank trip to Dearborn, Michigan. And that's our news at 6. The CBS Evening News with Dan Rather is next. Thank you for sharing your time with us. We hope to see you back here tonight at 11.